Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. So we're going to be using a lot of formulas. We have sine of 67 degrees multiplied by sine of 7 degrees minus sine of 37 degrees squared. I use the degree symbols just to make sure that you know that they're in degrees. But from now on, I'm not going to write the degree symbol because I don't like writing it. And I know some people are like, are these in radius? No, they're not. From now on, I'm not going to use the degree symbol, okay? And I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. For my first method, notice that 67 is 7 more than 60, and 37 is 7 more than 30. So I'm going to write the 67 as 60 plus 7, and then use the formula for sine alpha plus beta. Remember that formula? Sine of... 60 cosine of 7 plus sine of 7 times cosine of 60. Kind of like a heterogeneous relationship type of. Okay? Now, in other words, they're mixed, sine and cosine. Sine 60 is the same as cosine 30, which is root 3 over 2. So we can write it as root 3 over 2 times cosine 7. And cosine of 60 is same as sine 30, which is 1 half. So now we can write this as 1 half times sine of 7. So we kind of got like a linear combination of sine 7 and cosine 7. Make sense? Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing for 37. Again, I'm not writing the degree symbol, but they're all in degrees. Now we're going to write it as sine 30 plus 7. Use the same formula, sine 30 cosine 7 plus sine 7 cosine 30. And now sine 30 is 1 half, so this can be written as 1 half cosine 7 plus root 3 over 2 sine 7. It is similar to sine 67, but slightly different. The coefficients are switched. Make sense? Now we're going to go ahead and plug those into the original expression, this one and this one. Okay? So it's going to look like this. Root 3 over 2 cosine 7 plus 1 half sine 7 will be multiplied by sine 7. And then from this, we're going to subtract 1 half cosine 7 plus root 3 over 2 sine 7 squared. Because remember, in the original expression, we had the sine 37 squared. Now, this is easy. You're just going to distribute root 3 over 2 cosine 7 sine 7 plus 1 half of sine of 7 squared or sine squared 7. And then this one is going to be uh, three terms, if you use the formula, one-fourth cosine squared 7 plus 2ab is going to give us root 3 over 2 cosine 7 sine 7. And finally, root 3 over 2 squared, which is 3 fourths, multiply by sine squared 7. Okay? So far, so good. Now let's go ahead and expand, and you're going to realize these two terms cancel out. We end up with this, one-half sine squared 7 minus 1 fourth cosine squared 7 minus 3 fourths. Be careful about the minus signs, sine squared 7. Now, these two are like terms, so we can go ahead and combine them, this one and this one. 1 half is through 2 fourths. That's negative 1 fourth sine squared 7 minus 1 fourth cosine squared 7. This may not make sense to you at the at the moment, that's not the final answer because now we can go ahead and factor out negative one fourth and inside we're gonna find the most, one of the most important identities in mathematics. And that is sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha, which comes from the Pythagorean theorem and that's equal to one, yay. So the answer is negative one fourth because negative one fourth multiplied by one is negative one fourth. And that's the end of the first method, not the end of the video. So stick around because we're about to do an awesome method. Again, you're going to get to decide which method is better, which method you like better. And if there's a third way to solve it, please do not hide it from us. Okay. So for the second method, let me rewrite the problem. Sine 67 multiplied by sine 7. Again, I'm reminding you, these are all in degrees. Okay. So. Now, we're going to go ahead and use what's called a product to sum formula. That's one of the worst identities in trigonometry. And trigonometry has a lot of identities, but this is the worst one ever. And I already have it for you, so let me go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Here we go. 
this is the infamous identity sine alpha multiplied by sine beta, which is given by the difference of two cosines. Alpha minus beta goes first. And just memorize these formulas because without memorization, trigonometry is going to be horrible. And if your professor, teacher, instructor allows you to use a cheat sheet or a formula, paper, whatever, I mean, use it, right? Obviously, who wouldn't want to use that? So let's go ahead and apply it to sine 67 times sine 7. Again, those are in degrees. I keep saying because some people are going to object like, are they in degrees? Yes, I said it five times already. Okay, now, alpha is 67 and beta is 7, so we're going to go ahead and plug it in. Cosine 67 minus 7 is 60. How nice. And their sum is 74. Not so nice at the moment, but it's good enough. Now, this is what it is, but we can simplify a little bit. This is sine 30, which is 1 half. So we can kind of split it up and write it as 1 fourth minus half of cosine 74. So that's what I get from the product. Now I need to subtract sine 37 squared. What am I going to do with sine 37? Nothing for now. We're just going to subtract sine squared 37. And then we're going to think, what's the relationship between 37 and 74? Did you realize 2 times 37 is 74? Yay! So that calls for double angle, right? What is the double angle? Well, there are three formulas, but the one we need has to do with this. So we're going to use cosine 2 alpha is 1 minus 2 cosine, I mean 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. In this case, alpha happens to be 37 degrees, so we're going to plug it in or just use it. So we have the following, 1 fourth minus, and I'm going to use the double angle for this because 74 is 2 times 37. So I can replace cosine 74 with 1 minus 2 sine squared 37, which is half of that. Some people call this half angle because 37 is half, whatever. It doesn't matter, it's the same idea, minus sine squared of 37. Now, at this point, you can do two things. You can either split it up and simplify or make a common denominator. Doesn't matter, they're both the same. But I'm just gonna split it up because it's more fun, I don't know. One fourth minus one half, just be careful with the double negatives, that's gonna make a positive. In English, sometimes double negative doesn't make a positive, but in math, it does. So now you're gonna get positive two sine squared 37 divided by two, and then finally minus sine squared 37. I can't write 37 along with sine. Okay, now notice that this is the same as sine squared 37, bam, bam, they're canceled out. One fourth minus two fourths is negative one fourth, and then we get the same result one more time, which should not be a surprise because we're solving the same problem, right? So here's a million dollar question for you. Can we generalize? Because we got a numerical value. If you change the you know, angle de degrees, uh, the angles like 67, 7, and 37, would this also work? I'm going to leave that as an open-ended question. Now, let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha, and we'll finish with that. Okay, ready? Ta-da-da-da, -da -da. in decimal form, yes. That's what negative one-fourth is. And this is an alternative form, which is kind of scary. If you write it in radius, those angles look really, really scary, don't you think? I was first thinking about making the thumbnail this way, but then I'm like, this is probably going to be too scary, and people are going to be just scared away. And that would, you know, reduce the number of views, right? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to watch A Plus BI, which is my other channel. And bye-bye.